Hello, my name is Wojtek Fus and I'm a concept artist for film and video games. Today, I would like to take you through the process of creating this key art. Welcome to chapter four, which is our final chapter for creating this illustration. We will be compiling stuff, so we'll be bringing all the things we created in the previous chapter, so all the renders, all of the render passes into Photoshop. So from now on, it's all 2D. We'll be painting over, we'll be photo bashing, we'll be um, trying to unify it and bring it to the final. So let's dive in. So finally, here we are. We are ready to take all of those render passes we've just created and put it all together in Photoshop. So let's go through it. I will start dropping in my render files into Photoshop. So these files, these Photoshop files will inherit the resolution and properties of the files I'm dropping in. I'll just keep doing that for all of the layers, all right? So I'll just drop in my AO. I will drop in my mat ID. I'll drop in the preview that I've created for later. Shading normal, Z depth. So these are all of the passes for my foreground. And now I'll drop in my background elements, middle ground elements that are just the city and its passes. AO, mat ID, shading normal, Z depth. So I'm one of those guys who try to keep my file structure within Photoshop pretty organized. So I'll put my my layers into groups and I'll probably color them. I'm not going as far as I'm naming the layers and so on. I will just try to keep the bird's eye view, uh, especially when working on illustrations a bit more complicated, just like this one, that we have a lot of detailed elements moving around and I might want to move some stuff here and there. So the, uh, the last thing I need to drop in is my character and probably flipper. Yeah, so now we are ready to take those into groups. So this will be my, the city will be my middle ground. This will be my background. Yeah, sorry, my foreground. And what I like to do is create one group on top of the stack, just call it notes. This is where I put some of my thoughts while working that I just want to remind myself of when coming back to the file and coming back to the work I'm doing. So for now, I just make it gray. And I want my character to be in another group. And I'll just create another group that will put some background stuff in. Might, I might add a little bit more groups later here. So just for now. So as you can see, we have a bit of those unnecessary files. Um, we don't need to take a look at them right now, but we might need them later. So I'll just group them and call them utility, right? And turn it off for now. Same here. Turn off. All right. So here we are. This is these are all of the layers I rendered out from 3D packages I've used. And right now I'm ready to use those utility passes to extract information from these renders and actually start painting. And now I'll have a bit more freedom with just brush strokes and trying to make it look good from this particular, particular angle. So we are ready to move on. Maybe just let's just color this. I like to get my subject matter being red and my middle ground will be green foreground middle ground will be green and my background it's called the sky will be blue so with this file structure is really easy for me to find these things i need uh, whenever i need them and get back to those passes all right so we're ready to move on so the first thing I always like to do uh, after introducing my renders into the PSD file is to bring in some realistic looking sky. This sort of helps me 
to drive the look of the shadows and um, to determine the amount of sort of perspective depth, atmospheric depth that I need within my scene. As you can see, I'm trying to extract this depth information from it right now. I'm sampling the color of the sky to, to use for that haze. As you can see, it works pretty well with my city background. So these are the very first steps with the renders I often do in order to make it look a little bit more unified and coherent and structured so that it's not super noisy. So now it's a good time to talk about photo reference. So I will be using reference from photobash.org, which I am co-creator of. Uh, so these are royalty free photo reference packs with like really amazing assets of many different locations around the world. So you can see that I will be using a couple of skies. I will be using a lot of VFX packs that you can see right here, probably some flames, some embers, maybe some dust clouds. Uh, I'll be using skies I mentioned, probably some blue skies, because that's the mood I'm going for a midday, midday look. So if you're uh, in need of any photo reference, feel free to check this website out. We are a group of six friends that go out into the wild, go out into the world and shoot um, a lot of different locations at you know the best lighting possible. Uh, we also provide some masked assets that I use in my own projects. So feel free to check it out. And if you will ever wonder where does asset come from in my artwork, it's probably probably from Photobash. So let's move on. Finally, we are ready to get our hands dirty and actually start cutting, painting, and just working on top of that 3D without the 3D hustle, you know? So right now I'm trying to get as much out from the render as possible, introducing some trees I decided once I started looking at some street photography from New York and stuff. And one thing that I noticed is I would like to get the street a little bit more colorful than it is in my initial render. So I decided to actually, I started with just putting some photos on top of the buildings and it turned out I liked the look of those photos more than I liked the look of the render. And it's not because of the quality of the model or it's just about that the city that I rendered looks a little bit like Tokyo. It looks like, uh, you know, a gray, gray looking city. Whereas I wanted it to feel more like an American street with more mm, colorful buildings and different types of buildings, a little bit of color variation in there. So you are seeing me now trying to inject some life into the scene with some more, more differentiation in the buildings, cutting them out from the photos I found through Bing, Yandex, Google, and as you can see, I have to fix the perspective since, the, since these are not matching exactly. I have to keep that in mind. And for that reason, that render that I have underneath, it's a great guide. I just can copy the lines, the perspective lines that I can see in the buildings below and just you know start cutting away. I'm not worried how exactly this, all of these photos I'm cutting are going to merge into the ground. It's just because I have the foreground element almost completely obstructing the view there. So I'm just trying to match the perspective and trying to take care of the top tops of the buildings using some content or fill to get my missing pieces in the buildings and shading it a little bit. And I know like this doesn't have to be 
that super finished. Because I will probably put some blur, like motion blur in there. There will be some debris, there will be some stuff. So I just need it to look good enough to move on. And the most important thing is to get the perspective looking right in the first place. Trying to paint in some details in there and trying to fix the photos that don't work. Some of them are a little bit lower resolution that I would like to, but I know it's a background element. And since I have my depth of field blur in the foreground, background will be blurred a little bit too. I'm using Photobash assets here for the trees. They're really awesome, nicely cut out and can work in variety of situations here. Also trying to shade them and match them into that city street scene so that they look like they actually belong to the street and they're getting hit by the light. So the one to the right, the tree to the right should be in the shadow, the tree to the left should be lit a little bit, and that's what I'm trying to achieve right here. I'm also trying to increase contrast in the initial render to just mimic that harsh midday lighting a little bit more. Here, here I'm also using the pack called Time Square from Photobash, and I will be using a couple of elements that I will cut out from here as a really important street elements here. You can see how well it fits, mainly because I'm just choosing the photos based on perspective first, and then trying to cut them out and match. As you can see, not a lot of that photo will be visible underneath, but if it would, it would actually fit quite well. Looking for some middle ground skyscrapers, I think, that I could replace the 3D model from. I found this really cool, cool looking building so that my street will look a little bit more eclectic, like it's a mix of styles. And I decided to replace this gray building to the left. And you can see my perspective doesn't fit, but I like how this building looks in that particular spot. So I'll just try to cheat it in there and fix the perspective line so that it actually sits in that scene. The lighting works for this building, so I'm happy. And then I'm just now cutting the floor out so that it's not distracting me. Trying to sharpen some buildings that are a little bit too low res. Then I found this New York style kind of building that I'm also trying to paste in there. Cutting it out roughly and Reducing opacity, you see the perspective lines underneath, changing the white balance also, because it was a little bit too blue with camera raw filter. And here I'm trying to paste even more distant buildings into the shot. So my render is getting almost completely replaced, but it's not, it wasn't not useful. It was very useful for me to because I basically kept all of the volumes in there. I didn't change the composition that much. So I maintained the shapes that I established with my 3D. As you can see, I've just re replaced the building. I haven't added a new shape in there. It's the same shape, but in the same spot, but just a different texture. So it really informed and is informing everything that I'm doing right now here with pasting those city elements on top of that. And it gives me the freedom to know that I don't have to worry whether this object should be there or not. I know it should be there, but it's just a matter of, you know, a style of the building or whether this photo texture 
works in the perspective and its lighting is all right. Also trying to replace the skyscraper with something more shiny and modern looking. Just going for that eclectic look here. Some modern architecture mixed with some older. I'm constantly checking how it works with my foreground. I don't want to undermine anything. I don't want to create weird tangents with the flying cars. And it's really easy since there are so many elements in that scene. Also trying to separate it with some fogging so that it's not too contrasty. I still want a very, very clear read on that, on all of these foreground elements and middle ground elements. Still trying to see whether there is a better place for these trees. These are really intense visually, so I have to be careful not to create too much noise with the leaves and stuff. Pushing some background buildings to the back with some haze. And now I'm almost ready to move on to painting on top of the cars. Probably fixing some colors on the buildings and I'm almost ready to go. So this is me just painting and photo bashing on top of my 3D render. We're ready to move on to the cars now. Now I'm ready to go in and start using photography on top of my blender destruction, car destruction that I created before. And I won't be replacing as much as I did with my background. I just need to replace the the things that look the most 3D to me. So here I'm just replacing a headlight parts and some other stuff with photos that I found online. You can see that part being, being put in here. I make sure it's lit properly. And again, my 3D from underneath is informing my decisions here in terms of lighting, in terms of color, so it's not going to waste. It's all needed to make those decisions now way easier for me not to worry about perspective that much because I have it with a 3D model established. Trying to get more of that mechanical detail with some tires flying off, some cable details, stuff like that that is really hard to get in, in 3D. All of that fine detail. So I'm, my eyes are scanning this piece and looking at every car and asking myself, do I believe it? Does it look like a 3D model? If it looks like a 3D model, then I'm, then I have to paint over, replace, replace with either photography or paintwork. And I can still afford to be creative here adding some more interesting distraction, like some tires falling off, some, as long as it doesn't undermine my initial idea, right? A lot of stuff that is really hard to get in 3D, I'm getting done here. For example, glass distraction, right? I need some sh shattered glass effects and I'm trying a bunch of things. It might not work here. Again, similarly to trees. It is really intense visually, so I don't want to make it too much, right? So I'm testing, testing to see if it fits in here or not. This car will be really important since it's, it's in the middle ground, really close to my main character. Here I'm trying to build some reflections into those shattered glass pieces, adding some more shutter stuff to the car in the top right. Trying to stretch and fit those photos and see if they work or not. Sometimes they won't, so I will just get rid of them. So it's a trial and error to see whatever fits. 
And I'm always trying to not to limit myself to the parts I expect will work. Sometimes the, you know, the parts of the door will work as a roof. And if you just think of it more of like detail you put into your piece that is borrowed from a photo and the light is working in the first place and the detail is the detail you want to add, I think there is a lot of possibility that they can repaint. And since it's injected in the exact spot that you want, it will read as a thing you want it to read. Here I'm trying to create this windshield for the flying car that will be up behind and above our character. Trying to create a little reflection unsuccessfully. Here I'm borrowing the reflection from the car in the street. It will be really subtle, but it will be enough for me to make it read really like a, a piece of glass. Here I'm trying to fix this really 3D jelly looking spot in my piece that I was really worried about when rendering. Trying to use much color to fit. This probably won't work, so I'll delete it. You can see a lot of back and forth here, right? So might look like I know what I'm doing, but at this point, I'm just trying things out. PR find a really cool element in the crashed taxi that I really like. Actually, a couple of those that I can input and maybe cover a bit of my car here with its um, with its mask and put some shadow underneath so that not all of the roof that is not that good looking will be here doing some slight overpaint here I'm trying some doors this will also get cut yeah, and here you can see me actually cutting out a piece of crushed car and these are doors but so that I'm using them in in the roof and just painting out a couple of things and I think it will work so not everything you would expect when you're borrowing from a photo has to work in the in the place you inject it to. It doesn't have to be this specific specific thing as long as its abstraction is working to your advantage, which is in this case is just crushed piece of metal. I needed a specific um, flat plane of crushed metal to inject in that spot. So I didn't care if it was a door or not. Here I'm just replacing the wheels completely in the foreground car. Trying to work it into the smoke that I already have from the VDB volumes. Also found some cool looking crushed engine that I think will work well for the red car that we have in the top right, the bottom right. Also trying some VFX stuff. It's a little too early, so I probably won't use it, but I found this cool mask that I can use in the background car. And I'm just recoloring it to fit into the car I have in the background. So most of my choices now are based on the 3D I have behind. It doesn't have too much exactly since it's really organic. Those cars that are flying are crushed. So I have a certain amount of freedom that I can use to reinterpret the 3D model with photography that I'm using on top. Again, trial and mistake. I'm trying to replace the 3D looking part with some doors that I 
just want to paste in here. Trying to first fix the perspective, and I decided oh, it would be cool to have this taxi sign flying off somewhere. And I will be painting over all of this later on. So I'm not worried if something looks a little bit too photo-y for now. Just trying to have all of the detail in the place I need it to have and my 3D-ness destroyed, basically. So goals for this chapter are really getting rid of the 3D vibe from the assets you've rendered out and enhancing the overall details and the look of the piece. Right now I'm putting in some details in the shadows using the same photo over and over again on the lighten mode, as you can see. Just placing it and painting it in. I'm almost done here and we are ready to move on into character overpaint, which will be one of our last overpaintings. Now taking care of a little bit of fogging so that my elements are separated properly. We're ready to move on to the next chapter. Character paint over is one of my fav favorite stages in the process of overpainting the piece since I'm just getting to focus on some human emotion and just inject the, the human element into it. Right now, I'm changing the expression on the girl's face just because I didn't really like it. Also just trying to fix the some anatomical issues that I've noticed with, with that, something that just doesn't look right uh, with some hips and chest. So trying to just get rid of the dazziness of it and now painting over her face, trying to trying to just break up the, the edges and fix the shapes of the hair. Like Das figures tend to have this really enormous hairstyles, which I don't really like. Painting over the eyes, trying to add some eyelashes. And still trying to fix and break up the 3D-ness with Liquify. Just trying to make the face a little bit less symmetrical, a little bit more emotive. And painting over with a kind of a soft brush, painting over the face. I'm doing a pass on the whole thing with my brush. trying to break up the 3D-ness, trying to make it look a little bit more organic. Here I'm borrowing the lighting from the rim lighting from a different photo, and I'm just cutting it out and pasting it, pasting it on screen since I know my character is backlit. So all of this light is getting transmitted through, through the hair and it's getting lit up. It's the look that I really like, and I want to inject it into my scene here. So just duplicating these photos that have this specific effect. I put them on screen mode, crushing the blacks a little bit and moving it in a spot that might work. It's important to match the proper color temperature to the hairstyle you're using and to the hair color you're using. So this really contrasty, almost re these really hot highlights will bring attention, even more attention to her face. That's what I'm going for.
still experimenting with mixing the 3D and that I have underneath with photography and wherever I feel like something is working in a certain spot, I will just create a mask and try to match it. So here I thought, what if she would actually have a, a little t-shirt logo that would remind us of NVIDIA? I thought that was cool. I think, um, yeah, I just wanted her to feel like um, the green is a harmonic color. So I'm just probably going to add green eyes, green accent colors within her costume. Yeah, green eyes, just like that. Some green accent colors in the backpack. Again, going in and doing the pass over the whole character, trying to reinforce certain lines, break up the edges. Just overall make it look less 3D. And you have to keep your eyes fresh on that. I flip my canvas often, as you can see, just to refresh my eye on the certain things and try to judge, okay, does it look 3D? Does it look believable? Does it look nice? Is something off? So I'm constantly trying to assess and fix. So everything that I'm doing is just um, responding to that internal feedback that I'm giving to myself. I'm jumping all over, trying to have a coherent, realistic but still a little bit painterly look to her i want to avoid that 3d model look just doing some rim lighting on the side of her fingers and arm and now it's the time to deal with the shirt i will inject some creases in there I'll probably replace her belly right now, yeah. Just because it just didn't quite work for me. So I decided to put it in there and um, also replacing the jeans. And here I'm using Puppet Warp. It's a, it's a really amazing tool from Photoshop that you can just um, warp certain parts as if it would be a puppet by just injecting uh, anchor points that it will puppet around. It's way better for this purpose than the regular warp tool. And I use it often in the character creation, especially with lungs and uh, with legs and arms that I have to um, inject some textures on top of. Once I have these textures for the legs, I will need to reintroduce the lighting from the model from underneath since the textures that I've introduced are not lit in the same way that my model is. A little bit more creases. Again, using screen mode and soft light mode almost exclusively just those two, to texture. And here I've looked a little bit for that rim light that I wanted to introduce. I wanted something realistic. It was kind of hard to find, I'm not sure why, but finally I found some pants that were lit in the same way. So I'm just trying to introduce it here and I will probably delete it where I don't need it and paint over where I think it will work. Trying to simplify the overall silhouette and clean it up. Trying to fix a bit of uh, stitching issues between left and right leg. 
And here I'm extracting lighting information from the model, putting it as a mask for that adjustment layer and trying to paint it in where I need it so that the volume of the 3D model still talks through these textures that I've added. And again, cleaning it up effect up with a bit of overpaint. Grabbing even a softer brush to break up the detail within my character, maybe add some um, softer occlusion shadows. just like you see me doing now. Some more hair strands. At this point, I'm just polishing, just trying to make it a nice looking portrait, really, once zoomed in. And I need to take care of some more folds on another leg that I find might be useful. to have that line cutting my character out of the background. So now we are done with the character and we are ready to start moving into VFX work. So definitely the closer to the end, the more fun it gets. And right now we are going to take care of the VFX, so everything that is shattering, everything that is smoke, dust, and the G-force, the, the green energy. And uh, I will be trying a couple of different techniques to create all of these um, nice effects. Right now I'm just doing a little bit of fixes, a little bit of plane separation between, I move on into that, extracting some information from the Z-depth to just create um, selections and either paint in front or behind the cars that I have in my scene. So once my separations are done, I will use my magic folder. Um, so all of the kind of weird abstract VFX stuff that I've gathered over the years on the internet. Uh, I've also used um, a pack called Lens Flares from Photobash. It's really useful for creating these uh, abstract looking light effects. So here I'm introducing textures and I'm putting them on the screen mode, adjusting their contrast, placing them in the spot that I think would work, and then color correcting them and painting them in where I need them. So I mix effects of like some nebula looking stuff, um, smoky stuff, really abstract things. And I here I notice that this effect looks a little bit veiny and it might be cool to sort of show how this energy is flowing out of my character a little bit, almost as if it goes through her veins, lighting them up. So here I'm introducing it to, the, to both hands. Um, so here is my Borealis and I decided to use it a little bit as a um, sort of a heat wave or the magic wave that is getting out of my character and it's uh i really like the look of it and the colors and it fits my green energy idea so i'm using it here in waves it's really easy to overdo the vfx stage so you will see me cranking up the VFX to like 120% and then just toning them down in certain places. Here I'm introducing a little bit of that effect, green energy effect to each car. And later on I realized, oh, that might be too much together with explosions and particles and dust and everything. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fun trap, but you have to be careful not to overdo it. So here, 
trying to sort of imply that this green energy is the reason why all these cars are in the air. I'm just trying to establish that visually. Some more heat waves, green heat waves, and even more green. So screen mode here is my friend trying to extract light information from every photo I'm using. So trying some rough color correction and here's the time to introduce a fire and flames pack from Photobash to introduce some flamey shapes into my VDB volumes that I built and uh, rendered out. So you can see how little is actually needed from the VDB uh, to go from VDB to realistic. It's just probably a shape of the flame uh, that I'm introducing from a photo again on the screen mode. I really love this pack since it has a lot of different uh, flame types, a lot of variation uh, in terms of the scale of the flames and its its properties, I can match it into an explosion, or I can have these semi-transparent flames or a gas sort of flames. It's all all getting me saving me a lot of time at this point. Also using these flames to separate my planes a little bit or to try wherever I need to understand the object a little better. I will use this bright flame to get my silhouette out of the of the area that is not clear. Same with the smoke, and you will see me use that um, soon with the dust pack. So dust blasts are um, it's a great pack. I'm here using a trick of like um, getting rid of the black background and using blending modes window in Photoshop and then collapsing that um, layer by adding a new layer on top of it and just hitting Control E. Then I'm locking its transparency and painting within it. So the regular screen mode won't work in that case because I want this effect to be opaque. So I don't think these particles would actually transmit light as much as I want them to be a, a little bit thicker. I'm also using them here to, as a plane separation or even adding a little bit more like gra granular detail. Here I figured I need some local smoke close to my character and I, I can probably use it as a separator between the background and my character. That's exactly what I'm doing now. Copy and pasting the same layers over and over and painting in the light within that smoke layer. Found this really cool blast I thought might be cool to have. Of course, I overdid it the first thing and then I, I toned it down a little bit. trying to light up my particles that I've introduced, always thinking about the lighting direction, where the light comes from, and whether it fits or not. I decided to add some reflections from the VFX I've added onto my character, just a little bit of green, and here I'm also working on the, on the shadow from 3D that was just a little bit too harsh, so I'm blurring it a little bit and adding a little bit of light into it. So another really intense visually part that I'm going to introduce. And I decided to blur the background just by like one or two pixels. It will make all of these photos um, behind that layer um, come together a little bit and not be so granular. And it will work towards that cinematic look 
that I'm going for. And that's exactly what I told you about. I, I'm toning down the overall effects that I've introduced, the green effects. So I made a layer mask. I turned it all, turned the effects completely off, and I just painted them the green effects where, whenever I and wherever I needed them. Some more smoky effects. And here I decided, hey, this car feels like it's a bit too close to my character. Just feels a little bit too tight, like we don't have enough space to breathe in there. So I just moved it up and adjusted my layers. Some more wave effects from the photos I already used. And it's important for me to maintain that lush green color. Introducing embers and sparks just at the end. Uh, also a pack from Photobash that is just um, a collection of particles that I can use in conjunction with the flames. Lens flare pack and I'm almost, almost ready to go in and apply my finishing touches to that piece. Now it's a time to put it all together and paint on top of all of the layers. So I'm forgetting my layer structure at this point. I made enough decisions um, right now to just get in there with a brush on a flat layer and work on top of everything just using my 2D sense. And I'm getting in there and working on the entire thing. Going through some flames through some car elements trying to unify it trying to make it look like um it's neither 3d neither photo so i'm sort of trying to merge it all a little bit into one world and focusing here on edges a lot so edges and silhouettes trying to break them up i don't care if they're sharp i need them a little bit probably a little bit softer, a little bit more irregular, a little bit less um, cut out looking. Working on a taxi here, working on a red car, working in some rubble. And I'm just following my intuition with this, working on top of the flames, trying to sort of unify it all visually so that nothing screams 3d nothing screams photo and th this part is a lot of fun just painting away after all of this hard work we've done with a lot of 3d a lot of layers a lot of that stuff it's really fun to just forget about all of these things and paint away at this point we did a lot of prep work just to do that Turning my color correction on and off from time to time, just to see how it stacks up. Working on a blue car, and whenever I see a really photo-y looking element, I get in there with my thick brush and I'm just slapping some paint on top, sampling from underneath. Again, this part is looking really 3D to me. So what I'm trying to do is just paint it, paint on top of it. So this part is really straightforward. You just follow your intuition, trying to paint wherever you see something looks 3D. But again, not undermining it, just like embracing what's underneath. Because we don't want to change anything at this point. We just want to make it look visually pleasing when looking for a longer period of time on it so that it's harder to find these seams between all of these decisions that we've made so far. A 
working on integrating character into the background with some smoke and on the tires. Having that freedom now, it's, it's really refreshing. And I can see the finish on the horizon. And here I'm trying to make the G-Force a little bit more saturated. And here I'm trying uh, radial blur, which is a zoom blur. So I'm trying to blur everything a little bit, just a tiny bit, trying to make it look like it's moving in the air. And now I'm applying color correction to my piece using a lot of different techniques here. The technique that I really like is copying the RGB channel of the thing and just pasting it on top or using multiply. Just adds really nice effect of like saturating whatever was washed out before a little bit too much. So also adding, duplicating the whole thing, blurring it, putting it on screen and crushing it a little bit. The contrast just adds a little bit more softness to it. Almost done here. So my finishing touches are done. So here we are. Uh, this is our finish line for this particular illustration. I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough and I hope it wasn't too technical. Um, I hope you bring at least a few things out of this that you can implement into your own workflow. And if you want to know more about the upcoming tutorials from my site, visit my website, voitekfus.com and stay tuned for more stuff. Thanks guys.